I'm joined now by Renan Osterk and Kurt Morgan. Uh, Renan is a Sony artisan of imagery, and Kurt Morgan is a director and filmmaker. And before we do our Q&A with them, we're going to show the film that Kurt and uh, working with Renan as well made about the A7S III. What is creativity to me? I guess you could say it's my oxygen. It's how I breathe. It's how I speak. It's how I communicate. It's how I look at the world. I don't think I'd be human without it. Creativity is necessary. For me, it's therapeutic. It's the difference between living and existing. Maybe now, more than ever, storytelling feels like it really means something. There's a real chance for revolution, and I, I, I've used that word specifically. As photographers, we design worlds and create these experiences for others to view through our work. I pick up a tool, a camera, and that's my modality of creativity, but you can go out and you can express yourself any way you want. We all have a different thumbprint. When I have a camera in my hand, it's when I feel most comfortable. When I'm out exploring, out shooting, that's when I feel most at peace. Now the technology just keeps getting better and better and better. The Alpha 7S changed my career. I mean, I could see in the dark, basically, and there's no other way to put it, right? A veil had been lifted. It completely transformed what I could even imagine was possible. It was just a huge deal back then, and it's still a big deal now, and for the S3 to come out is massive. I think some people didn't actually think it would ever exist. But if I know one thing about Sony, the Alpha 7 S3 is gonna be a complete game changer. Come on, baby. Woo! 120 frames per second at 4K. In the dark. I feel like the things that your eyes are able to see with this camera, it's like you're in a completely different world. Do you mind standing on the edge? This is mental, dude. We're shooting at 20,000 ISO. That's perfectly clean. The autofocus is by far superior. <laughs> the screen feels nice and solid. Man, this flip screen is so nice. Oh my god. How sick is that? This is unreal. Like, crazy. I seriously want to go back to every place I've ever been and shoot it with this camera. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. All right, so we're gonna take it from the top. Bucket up, bucket up, bucket up, chop. When there is no income, when there is no job, when there is no project, like what does a camera mean? What does it do for you? It still gives you some sense of purpose. Every once in a while, something comes around that changes the way we see the world. It's one thing to have something that can shoot rad slow motion and low light, but to have it in a small package can help you tell more meaningful stories. Some of the best shots of our lives right here, guys. Isn't that the whole point of creativity, to share your stories, to make a connection? This is why I love shooting. It brings people together on both sides of the camera. And I would say that in many ways, that's what the world needs more of. It needs more of your perspective, your vision. And when you find other people that share that vision, that's when you find your family. And we're 
back with Renan and with Kurt. Um, watching that film is just so much to so much to take in there. Um, Kurt, just kind of starting with you, tell me about the concept for the the film. Yeah, well, we wanted to, uh, you know, we've all been through a quite challenging four, five, six months, and we wanted to really celebrate and respect the creative mind. And, you know, I think creative problem solving right now is more important than ever. And really, you know, make sure that we included uh, at least at least lightly that in the story and uh, just kind of the state of the union and, and how important creativity is. Um, and so we called it the way forward um, just, you know, due to kind of, you know, multi-part um, kind of, we have to come out of this um, going in a positive direction. And, um, and, you know, from a technological standpoint, this camera is straight up the way forward. You know, we got this, this camera in um, about a month or so ago, maybe six weeks ago. And I, I had written a lot of ideas and shot concepts for this. And it was funny because I was kind of doing it in the dark. It was a little, it was a little scary because I wasn't sure if the, the tech would meet the dream, essentially. And um, I, I think Renan probably had a similar experience. You're, you're designing all these ideas and, oh, could it do this or could it do that? And I'm not, I'm not totally sure. I have huge faith in Sony, but I don't know if my dreams kind of match. And, and um, you know, I got the camera it arrived at my house and I took it out in my street. It was pitch black. I turned it on and I could see a coyote in front of me. I couldn't see it with my eye and it just like, it shocked me. And I yeah. was like, okay, we can do anything. Like, you know, so that was the, the kickoff. Yeah, and I mean, just to clarify, this wasn't just about the camera and people using it. This was made with the A7S three. Yeah, the whole video. And, you know, we're used to, I mean, in my world, I'm, I'm, you know, we use all types of tools and so does Renan, um, not to speak for him, but, you know, part of me, part of me wanted to, you know, I'm so used to using a big camera and I was a little concerned to use a, a smaller, more compact camera just because I'm used to using a bigger one. Mm -hmm. And it just blew me away. Like even watching it over and over, I've seen it like 5,500 times and it's just it's an incredible cinematic experience in a really small form factor. We were talking earlier, you and I, about the notion of risk taking and you know the kind of the way you planned out the film and what you wanted to do. You were taking a lot of risks and you really weren't sure if they were going to work out. You know, there's a lot of fear involved with that. Um, you know, in this kind of environment, you kind of want to play it safe. You know, a lot of people might want to play it safe. You wanted to go in a different direction. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, I've always, <laughs> I've always played it a little risky. <laughs> I, I guess, like, you know, for this one, it's like if you're not going to push it a little bit, then you're just going to wind up with the same product, you know. And so, I think a, you know, uh, smart risk taking is is really important in filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, but once again, we weren't really certain if. We could shoot on the drone with the motorbike at night going 160 you know, feet and like 120 frames per second. Like it just didn't, you know, the, the vision was there, but like was the technology going to keep up with the vision? Mm -hmm. And that's always the question, right? And, and it, it is somewhat fear inducing. And, you know, um, I think a big part of filmmaking is overcoming fear. Yeah. You know, it's 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 something that you just have to just face head on and um you know we're in, we're in a obviously a global pandemic that wasn't an easy place to kind of begin so you're in a state of you know nervous energy and fear and will will this work and you know can we pull this off and you know every step of the way you know it the camera eased my um my tension and made it made it a more exciting experience because you know, you'll go out and you shoot the Milky Way. Typically, I would expose, you know, what, Ron, like 20, 30 seconds? At least. Yeah, and like, you know, I showed up at our first location, and I remember I went up on top of this hill. I'm like, I'm going to shoot the Milky Way handheld, and I, I know it's not going to work, but I'm just going to try. And I just set it for a one-second exposure with uh, the stability turned on and fired a shot, and it was perfect. 
I'll yeah. post it this week. But it, I was just like, just shocked. So the fear becomes alleviated through, you know, the progression and attack. Yeah. And Renan, um, you, uh, you're also making a film um, that's going to be out uh, within the next week or so, I think, and uh, called The Moonwalk. And um, not the same thing, but uh, dealt with a lot of the same kinds of issues. Um, you know, you really took a risk in, in what you were doing there. Talk to me about The Moonwalk. Um, yeah, that's it's awesome to be part of all this. But uh, The Moonwalk is essentially it was, a, it was an idea inspired by... Um, a friend of ours who died a, a few years ago, and it was a, a combination of knowledge of the landscape and knowledge of climbing and and highlining, which is um, slacklining, so walking a wire um, in a natural landscape. Mm -hmm. And this whole art form has has progressed over the over the last I don't know ten years to these incredible incredible places and it really just comes down to where you can imagine these lines and then where you can set up these art installations and our friend dean potter um, figured out how to do one of these in the high country in yosemite um, probably six years ago and it was this this image of a tiny little figure um, walking inside um, the circle of the moon um, and i think that really opened a lot of a lot of our eyes to what might be possible so we just we're trying to do our version of that um with the with the greatest um ability that the technology that we could get our hands on could could allow us to do and yeah we're lucky to get our hands on one of the first units and was working a lot with with kurt to dial in exactly you know how high we could push the ISO to get a clean image and um, it turns out that it was really complicated and um, you know pretty pretty stressful in the end trying to get um, about two to four kilometers away from the subject as he's climbing Andy Lewis is is who we worked with um, who's a total character of the Moab climbing community so to find a set of towers that hasn't been climbed before and then um, line it all up. And each each full moon cycle for the last four months we've been out in the out in the desert, um, running through these this cliffy terrain, um, bleeding, trying to find the place to to line it up. Mm -hmm. um, essentially Just bleeding casually. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just running through the desert at night, <laughs> bleeding, looking for the spot where the moon's going to come between two pillars. No problem. So, yeah, so, um, yeah you can't really run through the camp desert over, like, that kind of terrain with with a bigger camera. And that's that's why I originally shot with the A7S first generation and took it on these, these Himalayan expeditions where um, every gram counts. So this was just kind of another another extension of that. And... And beyond that, it's like it comes down to this this moment. It's probably 30 seconds long, um, and it it only, you know, the the part where he lines up in the perfect composition inside the circle of the moon at 600 millimeters with a doubler, it's probably only 10 steps on the line. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to get that in in slow motion and without any noise and and in different lighting conditions. And I know Kurt dealt with that and. He shot like ten different scenarios that were all like that. Like the motorbike was, that shot was probably the most memorable because it like slows down in that like climax of the the piece. But yeah, I, so, I think that your shot of the um, I don't know if it was yours or Taylor's, but there was a shot of the, the drone shot at night with the moonlight. I remember we talked about this. So Renan and I are like, we need to get a shot under moonlight and um, with the drone and. And I was, I was like, my expectations were, no offense, Renan, like, Renan's the best of the best. But I, I just, I was like, I've never really seen it. And I was like, ah, oh, if we get it, it'd be sweet. And I got the footage back from them. And I was like, like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, <laughs> it's just such a, a unique experience. And yeah. you, you did such a good job there.
And you guys both actually used the camera on drones. You weren't using another camera on the drone. It was the A7S III uh, going up into yep. the air. Yeah, it worked great. It really did. It was, I, I was pleasantly surprised at how yeah. great it worked. You know, Renan, yeah. I was... Um, I was talking to, when we were talking with, with Kurt about the notion of risk taking and um, the moonwalk. You know, it's got it's got kind of like risk taking on top of risk taking on top of risk taking. First of all, slacklining, I think, is incredibly beautiful, and I I think it's also like just incredibly um, insane because I I could never do it. Um, so there's like there's that huge element of risk, but then just like the conditions that you're going to be using this brand new camera. Um, you know, that's like extreme, you know, terrain, extreme lighting, super low lighting. There's a lot of, um, a lot of chances you're taking there. Yeah. And on, and on top of that, um, Andy like took upon it himself to free solo and he was, was walking in the dark and for him, that was kind of the highest level of, of the, you know, mastery of the art form and beauty of the image. So yeah, when you when you experience those things, um, as as Chris was saying earlier, um, work hard. Like you, you don't want any hindrances, and has everything has to be has to be there. And if we yeah we were in the wrong position and had to had to move like across like a down a ravine um, that we had written off about ten minutes before the the event lined up and then realized that we had no choice but to but to jump off the cliff and and up there and climb up the other side um with with the the camera built on a on a tripod and yeah you just can't you can't take those risks with bigger cameras I'll, I'll, that's kind of what i said before but yeah um it's those are those are like really special moments in life that you want to be able to capture and that's what i really I've always loved about about the whole Alpha series, and this is just kind of the the one that I would take on any adventure because you know you'll you'll be able to get the shot in any light conditions, whether it's like middle of the day or middle of the night. And right. that's you know if you're in, you never know what where you're gonna find yourself, and that's really important. Kurt, we got a question for you uh, from YouTube asking if you used Ibis when you were shooting uh, the film. The embody image stabilization. Uh, yes, we used IBIS. Um, we we kind of used a combination. We were kind of, you know, honestly, we were testing everything about the camera: different codecs, different, you know, stabilization, uh, hard sensor, just kind of going through all the motions. And um, you know, it's it's shocking that, that you don't need a gimbal like in most scenarios. I will say. You know, if you get the camera into a extremely high frequency, like, you know, vibration situation going 100 miles off, you know, off road, you might want a gimbal. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the thing held up like I couldn't even I couldn't believe it. And it's it's almost like scary. Right. It's just like um, and yeah, I actually don't I don't know or remember, but the crop factor when that's on, I don't even know if there is one or maybe very, very, very small, like 10 percent or a small percentage and um so you don't really even notice anything um from a framing standpoint and uh yeah no it, it worked incredibly well what surprised you uh, most about the camera or impressed you most about the camera uh well i would say you know i always have a lot of fear when we get to the color um you know to the very end of the line mm -hmm. in a film is is the uh the magic moment which is you know painting all the nice colors in and bringing out all those colors that are there and working in eight bit is challenging when it, when it comes to color. Um, and to be able to, uh, capture in four, two, two, 10 bit saved, I wouldn't say saved our lives, but it was certainly, it brought a lot of life out of the image. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that was a huge, huge thing. I mean, 4k 120 full readout, is really big. Um, I remember a shoot. You remember this, Renan? It was must have been 12, 15 years. I, it was a long time ago, 10 years. I don't know. Renan and I went and did a shoot for a brand um, on the Grand Teton. And I was in a helicopter. And I remember telling Renan, I was like, I want to bring 
you know, these big cinema cameras up the grand and I want to, you know, do these jib shots. And we were just having all these conversations. He's like, we can't. It's like, it's, it's too heavy. Yeah. And I'm like, I want the like epic cinema look in the small form factor, but it didn't exist. And like, I, I had this like, you know, this rewind moment and thinking about that and talking to Renan, it's like, this is finally a camera that I, I like legitimately would shoot on a feature film or a, a television series or, or commercial, whatever, that I would feel really good about. Um, and, and someone like Renan would be probably, right, feeling good about bringing that up a mountain. So you get kind of the best of both worlds there. Um, you know, I think at bottom line, though, the thing is a absolute low light beast. Yeah. Like, nothing touches it in the color reproduction um when you can see colors that you can't see with your eye at night like you don't really see a lot of color at night and it's all there yeah and, and all that luminance is there so it brings it just brings so much life to things that you can't see yeah and that's i think what the heritage of the line is all about and you really see that um in some of the stills that uh that renan has and we have an article on alphauniverse.com that showcases some of the work that renan did um shooting stills where you really see that color and in that really you know low light, it just all kind of coming coming together. And Renan, what what surprised or impressed you the most about the camera, and both for stills and for video? I mean, it's all yeah, it's all the things that that everybody's been talking about. It's all every single little improvement from the you know the the low light is definitely number one. Being able to essentially see in the dark um we were using it as night vision running around in the desert um because you know just trying to figure out where to go in the in the heat of battle there but uh yeah i just i just love the all the new audio features um the fact you can have time code i don't think anyone has mentioned that in the, in the live feed yet yeah, but that's that's for yeah. professional um video and you're using it on on production or documentaries where you got to you know sync sync audio that's that's a, that's a huge it really is a, that's a great point and nobody's mentioned that uh, that I've yeah. seen so far and um and yeah just the whole thing there's there's a lot of little features like even the one thing about the the new touch screen is like um and the the fold out screen is you can fold it back into itself. So yeah. I, I'm really hard on gear, and I often just throw my camera in a backpack because you don't have time, and you're 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 climbing um, a mountain or doing doing different things. So it's nice to be able to protect the the screen um, in that sense. Um, the menus uh, I, I love, and I was for video and stills I. I'm not like the the biggest nerd with menu customization and all that, but I could figure it out. And I had a, a still setting and a video setting during that moonwalk moment, so I could switch back and forth between the two. And um, there's just a lot of things that change. And if he's only taking ten steps on on the line, you want to be able to just do that with with one turn. So that yeah. was pretty cool. But yeah, no, just just really psyched to to keep using this thing on both like bigger commercial jobs, but also, um, you know, these passion documentaries. 